Hi, this is Kim from Emerging Creatively Tutorials, and this is ECT TV, episode 26. Today I just wanted to talk to you about my one of my biggest inspirations in making jewelry and that is nature. Where I am, we're coming toward the end of summer, although summer is really holding on tightly. It's still pretty hot out, but I know a lot of people are um, kind of overwhelmed by the heat in summer. Um, the summer is kind of suffocating for you and you have a hard time going out in the summer because of that. Luckily for me, I'm not that person. I love summer. I'm sad when it's over. But I know a lot of people love fall because it kind of gives us a break in the weather. It makes things a little bit cooler and crisper and it's a lot easier for a lot of people to go outside. So, since we're coming on to that time of year very quickly here, I wanted to just talk about creative inspiration in nature. Now, I do want to tell you I have an actual three-part um, mini e-course that is about a creativity expedition and I will link to that in um, the description below so that you can find it and that is a lot more involved than what I'm about to talk about but it's about going out in nature and getting inspired and then making some jewelry from it um, and I show you a very specific piece of jewelry there and I'm going to show you a different piece of jewelry today so when you're out in nature, um, there are all kinds of things that can inspire you. Just being in nature can make you feel better and make you feel more relaxed and make you um, just be ready to make things and create jewelry and come up with creative ideas. I like to sit in nature and write down ideas that come to me while I'm there. I like to draw things I see. I am not a very good drawer and you don't have to be either. You, it's tough for anybody else to see but if there's shapes you want to remember that sort of thing. Um, there may be colors you want to remember. You might want to take a camera or just you know take pictures with your your, your um, camera on your phone or that sort of thing. Um, but I just like to remember nature at any time I can. So one way I do that is to actually use gemstones in my designs because they're very earthy. They are from Mother Nature. Um, and so when I go through my day, um, if I'm stuck inside, I can feel the stones and remember Mother Nature. I can remember what it's like to be outside. Um, and being outside to me feels like freedom. So that's why it's important to me. So today we're going to be using some gemstones to make a necklace. If you do not have gemstones or you don't want to purchase any, that's fine. You can use the tutorial I'm going to show you to make any necklace with any beads, make a necklace of your choice. You could maybe just be inspired by colors and nature or, you know, maybe the shapes of your beads, that sort of thing. So, if you have a few minutes, I encourage you to just kind of go outside. It doesn't have to be any big deal. Maybe you have a tree. You can go touch, get in touch with nature. Or maybe you can just stand in the sun for a few minutes. If it's raining, I love to uh, watch the rain. I don't necessarily like to be in it. So maybe you can go out on your porch or in a, a closed covered area or just look out your window and be inspired that way. If you want a more full nature experience, <laughs> I encourage you to go sign up for my mini e-course. It's free. It's completely free. Um, and take advantage of that. But now I'm going to show you how to make a necklace. Um, and 
I'm actually wearing it right now. <laughs> so I'll show you how to make this necklace. Um, and so you can remember how, well, so you can remember nature. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so I'll show you what else you need. So you need these beads. I'm using natural magnesite oval tubular beads. These are 24 millimeter. Um, I got them at Happy Mango Beads, if you want the exact ones I have. You're going to need wire, um, 22 gauge, half hard, um, round wire. Um, you're going to need some chain, just because we're going to just add a few beads to a chain. So you'll need that. You will need your wire cutters, chain nose pliers, round nose pliers, and then another pair of pliers. I'll be using bent nose pliers and I find them to be the easiest ones to use because they're great for working with wire. It's almost like having an extra hand. Um, but you can use another pair if you don't have these. And just for clarity's sake, I say this often, if you don't have the bent nose, use another pair. What I simply mean is, you might have an extra pair of chain nose pliers, so these would be chain nose. Or you might have something like these square nose pliers. Any of them are fine to use when you're wrapping, whatever you feel most comfortable with. The bent nose, I feel like, work the easiest for most people. Um, and you don't want to use round nose because it will kind of put a mark in your wire um, when you're holding it to wrap. But in a pinch, if you use the very, if you hold round nose pliers in the very tip of your wire when you're wrapping um, and then trim off that part, you could use your round nose too. So if you only have, uh, like, say, round nose, chain nose, and your wire cutters, you could make do with that. So um, let's go ahead and get started. And I forgot to mention, you're going to need about three jump rings. Um, and really doesn't matter too much what size. I'm going to use 4 millimeter and then 9 millimeter, and then you'll need a clasp. I'm going to use a lobster clasp, but you can incorporate whatever kind of clasp you want. All right, so let's get started. Um, I have cut my strand apart of, uh, you know, the temporary strand apart of beads, and I'm going to use five of these beads. In my other sample, the turquoise, I only used three. Um, these beads were bigger. So th for this one, I'm going to use five, but you can actually use whatever you think. Okay, so we have our beads and our wire. Um, we're going to get started on this necklace. So on this turquoise necklace I made, I only used three beads and the rest of it is chain. Um, but for this one, these beads are a little bit smaller than my turquoise ones were, so I'm actually going to use five beads instead. And you can use any wire you like. I'm using the silver wire, but if you're using the beads I'm using, they have a really pretty um, brown going through them, kind of coppery color, so they look great with copper, or actually I think they look perfect with um, like a bronze or brass wire as well. But I'm going to stick to silver because I wear mostly silver. Um, so you can really use any kind of wire that you like. Um, so we're going to start with just one bead and you're going to repeat this for all of the beads. So uh, first you want to cut a piece of wire and you just want to make sure you have um, space on e a couple inches on either side. So if you're using this bead, the exact one I'm using, you need about five inches of wire. If you're using other beads, you can just kind of leave a couple inches on either side and that will work. All right, so I'm just gonna set aside the bead for now. Um, and on the wire, we're just gonna make sure there is a flush cut on each side. And that just means, if you haven't seen my previous video, um, the wire cutters cut, if you cut from the front, it's a pinch cut, if you cut from the back, it's a flush cut, um, and it just makes a nice flat straight cut, so you just cut 
this way. And let's put this ends to the side here. Alright, and now you need your roundness pliers. Um, and if you don't already have a mark on your pliers from previous projects you might have done with me, um, another tip I have is that you make a mark on your pliers with a sharpie. And then you use that mark to line up your wraps for a whole project. So in this case, um, I have a mark kind of about halfway down, and that is the mark I'm going to be using for um, this project. And I suggest you do the same, that way all your wraps are uniform. Um, it doesn't matter so much where the mark is as long as you make all your loops with that same spot. So, um, we're going to take a hold of the wire, um, it's about a third of the way up, and line up on the mark you made on your pliers, and then you're just going to pull kind of the wire towards you, and then around. So, let me just take this off to show you, that's what it looks like. And then what I do is grab my chain nose pliers and I kind of wrap, I'm going to wrap the small part around and pull the side straight at the same time like that and that way you get a straight loop on top of um, your wire otherwise it could be off to the side um, there's other ways of doing this when you still have your round nose pliers on your wire before you would do that wrap you can just simply roll back a little bit and straighten out the wire this is how I do it because I found it works best for me and now you're just going to put that loop in your chain nose pliers and we're going to wrap the wire around if it's long, it's easy to do this with your fingers, um, but as it gets closer, you need to use another pair of pliers. So I'm using my bent nose pliers for this, and this is where your other pliers I was talking about at the beginning will come in handy. So just make sure you go around a few times, and then I'm just going to trim off the extra, that's a tiny bit extra wire. And then you just take your chain nose pliers and make sure that end isn't sticking out and you just do that by kind of going around like this. And then I'm just going to scooch these together so they're a little bit closer. You just want to make sure your wraps are all, you know, close together and tight and even next to each other, not on top of each other. Um, and, you know, that might not happen the first time you do it, but with practice, you'll get better at it. Alright, so I'm just making sure this is straight, and I will grab a bead, slide it onto the wire, and now we're just going to repeat what we just did on that side, on this side. The only difference is we have a bead here now. So, I'm just going to leave... And for some reason, this always looks like a lot more space than it is on the video. Um, basically, I'm leaving, I'm just going to measure it, about a quarter of an inch um, between the bead and the bottom of where my pliers are. And then I'm just going to do the same thing again. Just wrap around, and I'm going in between the bottom of the plier and the top of the bead here. And again, I'm doing the same thing, grabbing my chain nose pliers. As I'm wrapping, I straighten out the loop. And now I'm switching hands. Um, so I'm holding this loop in my chain nose pliers. And I'm going to wrap around three times again. And you just want to do the same amount of wraps so it's even. And make sure you're pulling tight. And you just want your loops going kind of the same direction. See, they're both like this as opposed to one being turned. And if they're not, you can just use your pliers and fix it. So they are. 
And same thing again, if you have extra wire, just trim that off. And then just take your chain nose pliers and make sure that end is tucked in. So I call this a bead link, a wire wrapped bead link. So now it's like very easy to use this in all kinds of jewelry, um, but we're going to make a necklace. And I'm actually going to interlock my, my bead links. So I will show you how to do that. So we're just going to start again. On the first side, it's exactly like I showed you before. So we're just going to make a loop. And go ahead and wrap this. Like I said, if usually when this wire is kind of long on the long side, you can even just do it with your fingers. But once it gets shorter, you need to use your pliers. Alright. Sliding on a bead. Okay, now this is where the change comes. Oops. Hold on. Alright have a little bit of a weird my end is poking up a little bit so I'm just going to push it down and then fix it slide this back down make sure everything is straight again see not everything always works out perfectly alright so now the side it starts the same but before you start wrapping that and kind of closing it off, you're going to take your other bead link and put it into the loop. And now you just finish it the same way though. You just you just sort of hold this loop in your chain nose pliers with this kind of dangling off to the side, like almost like it's not even there. And then you just finish up your wire wraps, trim off the excess, and there we go. Make sure the end is not poking out. So you have two. I'm going to make a total of five of these. Um, you can make as many as you want. You could even just really use one bead link and just have a really simple necklace. So um, you can, if you're making this while you are watching, you can hit pause and finish up however many bead links you're going to do. And then we'll be right back. Alright, so I have my five beads all connected, just how I showed you. And now we're going to add a chain to the necklace and finish the necklace. So what I usually do when I'm adding chain to a necklace is I simply measure it around my neck, however long I want it. Um, and I usually just hold up the piece that's going to be in the front up to my neck kind of see where it ends and then wrap this chain around my neck to this point. It's very unscientific. You could use um, measuring tape and measure everything exactly um, but that's how I do it. So that's how I just got um, the length of chain I need here. So now I'm going to use two four millimeter jump rings to attach the chain to the ends here, um, to each side. So I'm going to open up um, my jump rings. And if you don't know how to open up jump rings, I have another video on my um, YouTube channel that shows you very clearly how to properly do it. There is a right and wrong way to do it. And if you haven't done it before, you may not know how to do it. Okay, so I'm just going to attach each end. And notice I haven't actually cut this chain into two pieces yet. It's still one long piece. Um, so I just will do that next. 
I don't know why. I just like to get it attached first and then cut it. So I'm just adding, you know, the loop and then the end of the chain into the jump ring. And then I am closing it. Alright. Alright, I wanted to show you a bigger view. So I adjusted the angle. Um, so now I'm just finding the middle. And this is why I like to use five of these because you can easily find the middle. Finding the middle of the chain. And then I'm just going to snip it. So now I have two loose ends. Alright, and then you can just kind of double check to make sure it's exactly how you want it. And then on one end, I'm just going to put my lobster clasp with, I'm just going to use a 4 millimeter jump ring again. So I just open that. And I'm just going to attach it to one side. Alright, so here we go. It's just, I'm just putting it on, on the very last link here. And then you just close the jump ring. And then on the other end, I'm going to put two 9mm jump rings, and these are bigger, um, and this is just to kind of close the necklace, so this will, you know, hook into, the lobster cross will hook right into that. So um, I always like to use at least a couple, I don't know, it just always seems easier when you have a couple of links instead of just one. So, and if you didn't notice what I just did, I just opened one, um, put it on the chain, added another link, and then I have two. And you can always double check to make sure the second one is closed yourself. Sometimes um, when you buy them, they're not completely closed the way that you would like to do it. So that just hooks in there. And that is your necklace. It's very earthy and can remind you of, you know, your time in nature. And throughout the day, if you need to feel closer to nature, you can kind of touch the stones in it. So, there you have it.